This weekend, I finally got a chance to see Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Hey, I just saw Heat. I know, it came out a month ago. Uh, I wanna talk about it now. I wasn't gonna go see it in theaters, but you guys convinced me to, and I am so glad you did because I really enjoyed this. So let's talk about it. Do I have to say spoilers for a month old movie? Spoilers, there. As I said, I had planned to skip this one because Marvel is really underwhelming me lately. I didn't see Thor 4 in theaters, didn't regret it. Didn't see Wakanda in theaters, didn't regret it. Didn't see Ant-Man in theaters, definitely didn't regret it. But I really would have regretted not getting the theatrical experience for Guardians. I said previously that the reviews didn't sell me. Every one of the reviews was like, it's really good, but... Or they would say, this is the best movie since No Way Home. That is not selling it. Or they would say, it's really good, but it's not perfect, and it's a great send-off to the heroes. I really applaud the honesty with these reviews because it's not perfect, and very few movies are, but the problem problem is, for audience members like me, we needed rave reviews to break out of the Marvel malaise. It's a real shame that this movie got kneecapped by the studio's other offerings, and I still can't blame anybody but Marvel. My original prediction for the movie was 725, which appears to be the estimated total at the end of this Memorial Day weekend. Next week, Transformers and Spider-Verse are out, which I'm going to go see, so I think Quill and the gang are going to be done at that point. So it looks like this one's going to land a little shy of 800 million, and I genuinely feel bad for him because it was an excellent excellent movie, if a little unsettling. First thing I want to mention is the pacing is fantastic. I don't make a habit of checking run times before I go to the movie, so I didn't know that I was getting into a two and a half hour long movie, and I didn't realize it until I checked my watch at the end of the show. It did not feel like two and a half hours. That opening sequence was probably the slowest part of the entire movie, and after that, I didn't think about time or boredom once. Everything in this movie feels properly explained, but never belabored. It was a really good balance. Multiple commenters pointed out that this movie is very low stakes and personal, and I agree, that's why it works so well. The entire movie was just about getting the code to fix Rocket. There was no multiverse threat, no galaxy-wide calamity. He left out some important information, but... That is the gist of it. It's just this group of people trying to work through their own personal stuff and save their friend. This is what the MCU is missing. The characters are driving this story, and it's really impressive that you had six protagonists that all managed to get their arc moved forward in a natural way. And the characters had a really nice ending as well. I didn't cry when Peter went back home, okay? I, didn't, I, I wasn't crying, but I, uh, I had a little pressure in this area. It's enough to make a grown man cry. Drax was a dad before the first movie even happened, so seeing him get back to what he was supposed to be was really touching. Just wanna say, Drax, Namastad. The father in me recognizes the father in you. I don't think they needed to make him such an idiot, though, to prove that he's not supposed to be the destroyer, but the protector. I think they went a little heavy on the jokes, making him stupid. Rocket taking over the group was really cool, because he's always the most competent one anyway, and it was and the, the movie was kind of his story. I loved that ending for him. Craglin didn't get a ton of screen time, but he came into his own with the arrow, and that was really nice to see. Nebula's always been searching for a family and a purpose, so leading the people of nowhere, taking care of its citizens, that seems like it could be a good fit for her. If they make more of these, I'll be interested to see if they sort of explore how she's able to live like a non-fighting life, you know, like an ex-con trying to live a normal life on the outside. I was pulling for Mantis and Drax to get together, and I really didn't love Mantis going off to find herself. My wife and I are in serious disagreement about the ships in this series. <laughs> she incorrectly believes that Drax and Mantis were always just friends. I know for a fact Drax had feelings for her, and I'm pretty sure she had feelings for him. She is also wrong to believe that Quill and Nebula are going to get together. I assured her the scene where he notices how black her eyes are for the first time, that was only there to demonstrate that he is jumping from one lily pad to the next. He doesn't know how to be alone. They're definitely not getting together, right? Can you please settle those for us? Thanks. I wasn't happy with the finale for Gamora or Adam, but we're going to come back to that. Another thing the MCU needs to take from this movie was the correct amount of comedy. When things were going down in this movie, and it was getting serious, and people were dying, we didn't stop to make quips. When stuff was getting heavy, we didn't yank back and try to lighten the mood with comedy. There were definitely funny parts, but when the scene called for action or emotion, they left the jokes out. And the action was excellent. That hallway fight scene at the end... Holy crap, that was incredible. The cinematography, pausing every now and then, the music they chose, timing the scene to the music, having the gang all back together, working together again. I, I, it was action scene perfection. And as gross as the flesh building was, that fight scene was really great too. The final fight with the High Evolutionary was so satisfying. Seeing the gravity boots from the very beginning of the movie come back into play, then the whole group shows up to gang beat this bastard. It was outstanding. And the 
Evolutionary was such a good villain. A lot of people were commenting that in my DreamWorks Villains video, and I can see why. The theme is about these Guardians misfits coming together, this found family thing, and complementing each other with their imperfections. The High Evolutionary was a great counter because he kept separating people and species to try to achieve this perfection that he was seeking. And it was so easy to hate him. It was clear that he wasn't actually after perfection. He was just a sadist that enjoyed experimenting on animals and people and wanted to play God. You know, being a Midwestern suburbanite, I was actually kind of pleased that my everyday lifestyle was his latest attempt at perfection. And we obviously cannot forget the music. I really love the theme of the progressive decades for each movie and then Rocket carrying the team forward with the 2000s. He even got his own theme song. Rocket's got kind of a New York accent, so no Sleep Till Brooklyn was such an awesome theme for him. So I was extremely pleased with this movie, but it would not be honest to say that there were no downsides. I have three. Number one, and this is the biggest one, this movie is gross. Just so nasty. Like, going out of its way to be disgusting. Ah! I was screaming at something scary behind you, not you. You look really cool. Thank you! All of the evolutionary's creations were horrible to look at, which I get was the point. Look, we hated him for what he did to those animals, but I could have used with being a little bit less unsettled. I, I got it early on. He's the bad guy. I get that. All these creatures are deformed and they have stitches and robot limbs and the stuff's not healing right. They look filthy. It was just gross. Rocket's friends did a really good job of showing what a sadist the guy was, but a bunny with spider robot legs is just not what I want to see. Then we've got the flesh building, which was also disgusting. Everything is squishing and squelching. The sound effects really put it over the edge of nasty. Just visually unsettling the whole way through. My last two complaints are Gamora and Adam. I get they were trying to draw a very distinct line between the Gamora that we knew and this new one after Endgame, but I think they took her attitude a little bit too far to do it. If you go back and watch the old movies, she wasn't a complete jerk. She knew Thanos was evil and she was trying to get away from him or betray him somehow. They tried to give her a good ending. You know, she found her family among the Ravagers. I just don't know that any of it was really necessary. They gave one throwaway line about her even being there just because of Infinity Stone magic. And then she doesn't end up with Quill. Anyway, why not just write her out completely? Adam Warlock was similar. His character was not great. I'm a self-professed normie. I'm not a comics guy, but I hear that he is a terrifying force to be reckoned with in the comics. This man, child that we ended up with was not funny or entertaining and he didn't even do much yeah he's the inciting event by injuring rocket and then he doesn't really do much he attacks the ship on counter earth but that's only because they decided to drive to the pyramid thing instead of all getting back in their ship and just flying over to it as that was weird in the end he saves quill but that's only because they created fake drama by having quill miss the jump when he misses the jump and he's floating in space it's so obvious adam's about to fly out and get him the scene just had no tension it did not work for me at all so my wife and i absolutely love this one we both gave it an eight out of ten i think we deducted a point because it was just generally gross and the points don't matter but i can't wait to see it again no family reviews on this one i knew it was going to be nasty and my kids were going to have nightmares for days so no way i was taking them to see this one but now it's your your turn. Tell me your favorite parts about this movie. I appreciate you watching and I appreciate you encouraging me to see this one and I'll see you next time.